Chad Westfall here with Diesel Army Magazine. I wanted to put together a video kind of highlighting some of the key processes that are involved in doing a mega cab long bed conversion. Now our particular truck, which there's very little left right now, is a 2006 Dodge Mega Cab short bed. And when we're done, it'll be a 2006 Dodge Mega Cab long bed, and we're actually going to convert it to a dually at the same time. Now in order to do this process, we went ahead and had the cab removed by our good friends over at Diesel Dynamics. Originally we were going to use a pneumatic lift to lift the cab up off the ground or off the frame roughly 12 inches, but in doing that what we found or what we were concerned with is that we wouldn't be able to show you guys what we're doing. It'd give us enough room to work, but it wouldn't give us enough room to work and take photos to kind of document the process. So we went ahead and had the cab removed from from the frame and then the bed we actually removed from the uh, from the bed here in my in my garage now as far as the the mega cab conversion itself what we have is we have a quad cab long bed frame that we're going to be grafting into our mega cab short bed frame so the factory dodge frames are fairly modular the front portion is pretty much universal for all two-wheel drive applications and then there's another frame section that's the same for four-wheel drive applications. In the rear there's pretty much a long bed frame and a short bed frame. The main thing that's different is there's the center sections. The center sections have different cab mount configurations for the different setups, the, the regular cab, the quad cab, and the mega cab. And this is this is really where the majority of your, your differences lie between all the frames. The, the beauty of that is because these are modular and they're designed to be modular, the center sections, while they're the same um, size and shape as the rest of the frame, the ends are flared. And because the ends are flared, they're able to slide over the other pieces of frame. And then there's a weld slot on top and bottom. And then there's a, uh, a C-channel cut on each side for additional uh, weld length. Um, and they're just welded together. For us, what we're going to do is we're going to retain the front three mounts off of our mega cap. Then we're going to cut the, the frame at the joint just after the third mount. And then we'll slide in our quad cab long bed frame. So the front three mounts will be factory mega cab. The rear mount and all the bed mounts will be factory quad cab long bed. Now the nice thing about doing all this is because this is, there's a joint here, what we're able to do is put everything back and it'll pretty much look exactly factory when we finish. So unless you're a really astute observer, you'd never even know that we modified the frame. Now when we went ahead and did all our measurements and came up with everything, we made these little inserts, which the article will have a, a bigger photo and go into a little bit more detail on these. But they've got a little nipple on top. So not only does this center it, but now we've got a, a precise point on top of each one of these that we can measure to. So we took lateral measurements and we also took crosswise measurements to figure out exactly if everything's square, where everything's located, where everything is, so that when we go ahead and graft in our quad cab, we can position the rear two mounts in the exact same location as what they are now so that we know that when we set the cab back on, everything's good. Because we're at a little bit of a disadvantage than if we had done the pneumatic lift in that we don't have the, the, uh, the body here to be able to, or the cab here to set the cab back on to make sure everything bolts up before we weld it. We will have this thing fully welded before we put the cab back on. So there is a little bit of a risk doing it this way, but for us, we felt that this was a, a good risk to take so that we could show you the whole process and document everything for you.
So it's been a few days since we've updated you. We've done quite a bit of work. We went ahead and took our Mega Cab short bed frame and uh, cut it off and prepped it for the quad cab long bed frame. We have taken the quad cab long bed frame, cut it to short to uh, to length, slid these two together and welded them all up. We welded in the cross brace to hold our drive shaft. We've got a new drive shaft and we're in the process right now of doing the exhaust and the wiring. Now when we cut the mega cab long bed, I just kind of want to show you what it looked like. So we cut the, uh, the back end of it off behind the, uh, the cab because we knew we didn't need that. And then we went ahead and used a, uh, a cutoff wheel and cut around the C-channel all the way around used a plasma cutter to cut out the weld slots and the cross brace for the dry shaft and then we slid it out. Now we found that we were getting into a little bit of a bind with the left and the right side connected so we went ahead and cut the cross brace off so that it's, it's no it wasn't there and then we could pull out each side individually and what this did is this gave us a, a, a rough estimate on how far from this back cab mount cord then the quad cab long bed frame needed to be in order to slide in. Now one thing that the factory frame has is the factory frame it's been stretched and tapered down in this corner in order to slide into this frame a little bit easier. For us we don't have that ability so there are two options either cut the four corners and kind of bend it in or just not worry about it. With this particular project I didn't worry about it I just cut it off slid it in made sure all the measurements were the same and welded it in I did run into a couple of spots that were a little tight and I could have used a taper because the taper would have made it slide in much much easier so there is some advantage to taking the time cutting the four ends and bending it in to, to slide in but I didn't do that I just left it left it the way it was and, and slid it in and made it work uh, I had to use a come along on each side to slowly inch it in to get this thing squared and, and in. Uh, but all in all, it was a fairly straightforward and, and simple process getting these two ends to slide in. Now, after, after they were slid in, we got all our measurements spot on, we welded the, the, uh, the slots, and then we just started welding the, uh, the channels and and making sure that everything stayed true and stayed in alignment. And now we've got a 2003 quad cab long bed rear section of the frame. And we've got a 2006 mega cab short bed front section of the frame. The, uh, the distance here is the same, but the distance between the wheels is about 20 inches longer. When we, uh, we got the new dry shaft, we had to extend it 20 inches in order to get it to line back up and fit. Right now we're in the process of doing the, the same thing with the exhaust, the wiring, and the fuel lines. we reached a milestone in this build. We're finally at the point where all the major components are done. I have a couple little minor things that I need to wrap up, but I want to go ahead, make sure the cab fits, the bed fits, and uh, test fit the new American Force wheels that we're putting on this truck. Once the wheels are, are test fit and we know they're good, then we'll go ahead and wrap them in rubber, and by the time we get all that done, I'll have a couple miscellaneous things done, and the truck will be up and running. But I wanted to stop right now and kind of show you how, how I'm going about doing the, uh, the bed as a single person and not using a team or a big forklift or, or anything fancy. There's really nothing fancy about how I ended up lifting the bed off the frame. What I actually did is I ran a 2x4 along the whole width of the, uh, the bed, ran three or three and a half inch screws up into each of those trusses. And then I wrapped a uh, small little chain 
around the 2x4, ran a come along down on the front and the back, and then I have tie straps in the bed run side to side that the come alongs are hooked to, and then up it went. When I took the original bed off, I ended up only using one come along. I hooked up a bunch of tie straps in a X pattern and picked it up from the metal, and what I found was the, uh, the bed was quite unstable, and I had to work really hard not to damage anything. So with this, using two, I'm able to have a lot more front and back stability, and by hooking the come along as close to the middle as I can, I don't have any roll or anything in this, so it's actually very stable and pretty straightforward and simple. It's one of the, the easier ways to lift a, a bed off a frame by yourself. Now, obviously the easiest would be using a lift, and probably second easiest would be something like a forklift or a, uh, a tractor, which can, uh, can lift the beds off pretty easy. But if you don't have any of that and you're just working at home like I am, this is a pretty straightforward and simple, simple method to do it. So there we have it, a mega cab long bed conversion done in a garage at home by one person.